The ecosystem in Wuthering Waves is Coral Games' take on artifacts and relics. It's your standard equipment on a character, besides their weapon. I must say, it is an interesting take to take your equipment and turn it into a Pokemon catching style game, and I really like the concept and idea behind it. So as you play with Ring Waves, you will go through the story, travel and explore, and all the while doing so, you will be killing monsters. As you kill these monsters, you can suck their soul into your gourd and harvest their remaining holes onto the realm forever within the endless abyss of tormented souls, where they will never escape and either be erased into nothingness or placed upon characters that they are deemed worthy, only to be used for a few seconds every day to murder their remaining brethren. In other words, you will capture monsters Echo and they will serve as your equipment. They will gain a random set bonus and a random main stat. They also have the option to add substats with the unique item, but I'll explain how substats work in a later portion of the video. So about equipping these items. If you are used to equipping hats, goblets, shoes, etc, that's not the case here. The only thing that matters is that if you're utilizing a set bonus. You have to use unique monsters to actually attribute to the set bonus. Each monster has to be different for the set bonus to activate, so you can't just farm one monster over and over and then equip four of them to activate a set bonus. The good thing is, you can hunt down monsters specifically, so you can eliminate one layer of RNG at least. So let's walk through the process of farming equipment so you have a better understanding. When you're at your character menu, you can actually see the available sets to equip. At the moment, there are 9 sets for characters to utilize. To be honest, I feel there is no need to even add any more because they are all generalistic and they work perfectly for the game. I'll briefly glaze over each one so you can actually get an idea of how each set work. While you're looking through these, please consider leaving a like on this video and subscribing for future content. You must be enjoying the video if you made it this far, and this will really help grow the channel. Thank you so much. As you can see, you can filter the available monsters by set. When you're actually going after monsters, what that means is that they have a chance to get that particular set. It's not guaranteed to get the set on most of the monsters. If you're farming the bosses, whose cost is 4, then they are guaranteed to have the particular set bonus that they are described to have here. Basically, the Havoc boss will always have the Havoc set bonus. Havoc Eclipse. Now, the top monsters in the equipment is the monsters whose ability you inherit. For instance, if I have this monster here, the Crownless in the first slot, and I use him in the overworld, he will do significant damage on the enemies. All of the monsters equipped below the Crownless are just there for their stats. But you can also put this little turtle guy on here and do a little dance, you know, if you really want to do that. So if you want to gear out your character, here's what you do. Let's say you got a brand new character. In this case, I'll use Yang Yang since I haven't actually farmed any equipment for her yet. Firstly, you have a certain cost, which you can level up over time by upgrading this here, the databanks. This happens naturally over time, but the highest cost for the slot seems to be 12. The higher the databank level, the more likely you are to get rare echoes. The rarities is from green, blue, purple, and then gold just like relics and artifacts in Genshin and Star Rail. So first things first, I have to choose what set I want. Yang Yang is an Aerio damage dealer, so the Aerio set seems like a good choice. I'd first want to get the 4 cost Echo slot, in other words, the boss monster. As I mentioned earlier, they are guaranteed to have the set bonus that I desire, for this case being Sinetto Effect which boosts aerial damage by 40% in total for having all 5 pieces. There doesn't seem to be a limit to how many times you can farm the boss, which is absolutely fantastic. The only thing is, you will have to wait for him to respawn. But for the other monsters, there is a limit to how many are on the map. Some elite monsters have about 3-4 to four across the entire map, while other elite monsters have like 20, or 40 or 50. Like, there's a lot of wolves across the map, and I was able to hunt them for hours, but for these apes, I was only able to hunt them for about 10-20 to 20 minutes. Alright, let's go and kill this guy. When you kill him, it's not guaranteed to drop, but you could try again in a couple minutes if you don't get across anything good. And I got it this time, so that's great. 
I'm able to check the substats to see if I need to come back to him or I can just level it here, but we'll worry about that a little later. Now, while we're waiting for him to respawn, here's the next step. I normally prioritize 3 cost echoes here since they have a much more limited spawn and they are better as far as equipment. There are only so many monsters in the overworld and I haven't accessed co-op yet, but I'm sure once you do, which is level 30 by the way, you can farm these in other people's worlds as well. I don't know for sure yet, but for now, let's assume that they are limited to your world. You can't see how many of these are on the map. But, if you use the detection, you seem to be able to actually hunt down all of the monsters on the map, and then it will continue to the next one just like any other game. Each time you absorb the echo, there seems to be an increased chance to actually absorb the same monster the next time. I heard that mentioned earlier, and that does actually appear to be the case. So, once you actually capture one once, then you'll have a higher chance to actually get it the next time after that. So a day of upgrading your equipment is running around the map, exploring, gleaning chests, gaining waypoints, etc. while also hunting down the particular monsters that you need for your set bonus. For each one that you get, you have to look for a certain main stat. And from my experience, only boss monsters have crit rate and crit damage. These elite guys normally have stuff like attack or elemental damage bonus. Those elemental damage bonuses are rare, but overall, you can have attack, defense, HP, and elemental damage bonus. I'm not sure if you can get crit rate and crit damage. It's definitely possible. Maybe I'm just very unlucky. Starting off, I'm looking for attack and glacial damage bonus only. But when you capture each echo, it's not guaranteed to have the set bonus like the boss monsters. So I need a combination of both before I consider raising it. So once I beat up a bunch of these, I'll go back to the boss and kill it again for a chance for a new stat. You can do this all day and swap between killing the boss monster while hunting down all the monsters on the map. I think this is a really good thing, especially in the beginning because you're not locked behind resin or stamina. You can explore to your heart's content while lunk your map while doing so and getting your character's equipment. The RNG can still really mess you up. And there is another way to actually use stamina to farm for these. The lower cost elite monsters you can farm at level 25, while the higher cost bosses can be farmed at 27, and they're guaranteed to drop if you are using stamina. But it's definitely not required. So once I massacre a whole bloodline of apes, I have all of these echoes to look at. You can check each echo that you actually get as you go along as well. I can look through my echoes and see which ones match what I actually want to equip. Once I have a good enough set at level 1, here's where the next RNG check comes in, the substats. As you can see, you have no substats on the echoes yet. You can level them up to max, but you still won't have the substats until you unlock them. For the purpose of showing this off, take a look at this guy. He has crit rate, which is decent, so let's max him out. And then we can unlock the substats. When you level them to the max stat, you actually unlock the ability to unlock the substat, being at 5, 10, 15, and 20. So all of the stats gained from leveling them to 20 is static, and they do not change. The next step is tuning them. You will gain a substat for each tuning. You could have taken this slow and just raised it to 5, unlock a substat, see if you like it, and then go on from there. But for the sake of doing this quickly, let's just see what I get. Ooh, that actually looks pretty bad. I think having HP twice and no crit values is going to be not desirable. But hey, it's early game and these stats will matter a lot more later. You do, however, have a limited amount of these tuning materials that you gain from just walking around the map and collecting them. I have collected a lot across the map, and I've also been tuning a bit of my artifacts as well. If you run out of these tuning materials, then you can use your stamina to actually gain more. So you will do this for each echo that you've gathered. Make sure that after you get those three costs, that you move on to the one cost, the small boys, to completely raise the character, because you do have a cost limit, which is 12. That means that you can equip one of the boss monsters as your main one, two of the three cost elite monsters, and then two of the one cost small boys. Once you have everything leveled and everything tuned, you will have something like this. That's how gearing your character will work. If you did it correctly, then you will have the total cost of 12 filled out. 
That's the most optimal setup, but of course, it is harder in practice. The closed beta test 2 has only been out for about 5 days, and I have geared out a few characters, so it doesn't seem too hard in practice, honestly. Min-matching the substats is where things get difficult. As of now, it's unfortunate you can't use the smaller guys to level up Echoes, but if you actually level up anything, even a little bit, then you can use them to actually level up your new Echoes. I hope they do fix this in the future, because as you can see, I have a ton of Echoes that are just, well, bad. I do like this way of doing your equipment, but it still has its flaws. I'll have to wait until endgame to just see just how hard it is to min-max a character, and if it's required to do so to clear all of the content. Let me know if you have any questions. I tried to be as clear as possible, but I may have missed a few things. Just comment below and I will be answering many questions that I see down there. Still here? Great. Go ahead and like this video because it lets YouTube know that this video doesn't suck. Also, consider subscribing for more Genshin and Wuthering Wave content in the future. Until next time, Enigma out.